so that this session will be recorded. Uh, welcome everyone for coming by to our Pathway 63. Uh, this is a session related to two different projects on understanding your leadership style and also understanding your communication style. The first 30 minutes will be focusing on dissecting the understanding your leadership style with also demo speech, including evaluation and followed by a panel discussion on how to get the best tips out of doing this project and the benefits of it. The next 30 minutes will be focusing on understanding your communication style, which is also a level two project. It will be also focusing on you getting to know more about the tips and advice and how to understand this project itself. Now, first of all, I would like to throw the ball out to a question. The first topic we are going to do is called understanding your leadership. Now, for those of you who are very seasoned Toastmaster here, can you type in the chat box, what is the objective of this project? You can type in a couple of wordings, just highlight the main points so people will actually get it very quickly on that part. I'm hearing lots of typing sounds. It shows a good thing there. Identify the style of leadership. Yes, that's actually one thing. And then what do we have to do about it? Uh, what is the project objective? If we identify, so we don't need to go and give a speech, does it mean so? To share some aspects of your leadership style and how it impacts on others. Yes, uh, great job, Julie, for showing us a very great excellent exercise. So now we're going down into some of the basic stuff that we have to know about pathways is that in understanding your leadership style itself, uh, you can see that uh, it's actually one of the very key components in level two. Now in level two wise, you can see that most of the path actually has that, at least majority of them. Now you'll be wondering like, hey, how come there isn't any speeches in presentation mastery and again, gene human? Now in this two part, we actually focus on presentation skills mainly. Now it actually relates to also one of five of our core competencies, which is public speaking, interpersonal communication, strategic leadership, management and confidence. And this project itself is focused on leadership base. So you will not be able to find that in engaging humor on presentation mastery path. Now for this one, as Julie has mentioned very clearly, is to really share some leadership aspects. Share some aspects of general leadership style. Identify your primary leadership style through some practice that you need to do. Now, may I ask for the further audience, where do you get those exercises from? A very simple, straightforward answer. Where do you get those exercises from? You can type in the chat box. It should be very simple. You just need to type two letters, no, two words. <laughs> now, while waiting, uh, I would like to review the answer. Uh, it's related to Toastmasters base cam panel. So if you're going for online version, you can read it online in a base cap channel, or you can actually read it when you download in print. Now I'm gonna share a copy with the print version so that you have better idea about what this project actually concerns. Because sometimes when we actually want to understand a project, we best read the project. So I'm gonna share that screen. You will see that I actually download this understanding your leadership project way in advance. And a few things that you need to note before you read every single manual is that First of all, look at the objective of it. Now it will take a while because my computer is a bit laggy. Now it actually gives a nice synopsis at the first on um, talking about why do we need, even need to think about our leadership style? Uh, what's the importance of that? And how, do we can, how can we utilize it very clearly? Now when you actually go downwards, this is your assignment. Assignment page is actually one of the clear directions of any project in Pathways. Know the project very clearly as a, as a speaker, if you want to prepare this speech, it takes a bit of practice to identify the purpose and really understand the overview of the whole thing. Because if you're finding and evaluating your club and that member doesn't know what this project is about, you have the responsibility to really let that person know too. Even though, even though it's the responsibility of the evaluator as well. 
So you tell them about, okay, this one, I have to do some questionnaires. I, this is my answer in my questionnaire. I want to understand more about why my leadership style actually impacts different people around the world and then show some examples. Really, this is more like a self-reflective journal. It's more about you understanding yourself. So it's very clear cut that this project is focusing on finding your leadership style and sharing a story about it. Now, you notice that in this one, it actually focus on some exercise. I don't mean this evaluation. This evaluation is more like understanding yourself. This is what we usually do in any base camp projects, pathway projects, that we have to do some points of before and after survey. So you can actually kind of skip this page first, but then if I were you, uh, if I have to still do something, I will do a pre-survey first. I want to see my standard beforehand. So that's the current, currently the direction whereby Toastmasters International actually want us to follow. We have the initial stage of understanding ourselves. What, do, what points do we want to give? Now, post-project, after that, you can do a kind of a self-evaluation on that part. Now, what I want to focus on is really on this aspect. Now, this is a, it's like a kind of a to-do list or some objectives that you need to have the objective of everything you want to do. You just don't do it just for the sake of doing it. You want to learn something from it. So by the end of this project, you'll be focusing on leadership attributes, not just understanding your own leadership style. It actually has another meaning, understanding other people's leadership styles, the strengths and weaknesses and how we can help them and identify your own one comparatively to them and as well as impact. So this is like a very nice project for me when I was doing it. Uh, I, I'm focusing on one type of leadership for my entire life called servant leadership. Now servant leadership is actually not one of the practice uh, items in the agenda or rather saying in the uh, agenda. So I actually want to know more about my focus. So what I do is that remember, I actually ask everyone to have a piece of paper and a pen now, this is something that we want to kind of, but this is like more like exercise whereby we want to see what a successful leader is. But before that, this is, there's actually a practice whereby we have to do. Now, this is the practice of discovering your leadership styles. I highly encourage you to do so because that is actually one of the requirements of this project. There's no right or wrong answer in this. I assure you there's no right or wrong answer in this. Even though if you score very badly or score extremely high, don't worry too much. This is more for you to understand where your leadership style is, what, what it is, and where your strength lies. So I'm going to give around like one to two minutes. Uh, let me try to maybe minimize it so that we can all, all practice together and see how it goes. Now, this is whereby you understand your leadership style. There are around like 18 questions here. Obviously, there are more than that, but I would highly encourage you to do finish all this. It will take a while. It take me at least 20 minutes to finish this. But then I would like to have members or other saying, please take out a pen. Try to do the first 18 questions first. For those of you who have not done it, put a point system there. Now we have one to 18. You have a piece of paper. You have the rating scale of not at all to completely so at least do some practice first, write it down on, okay, first of all, I focus on professional development of others. Do you think that is not at all or completely? You have a point system there. No right or wrong answer. So I'm going to give everyone like one to two minutes to, to kick off on that. So you understand where we are going to stand. Can everyone see it very clearly though? If you can give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Just write the scores, don't need to write the questions. Remember, there's no right or wrong answers. Don't be worried that if it's like zero for everything. Okay, don't worry too much about it.
when you're done, give me a thumbs up. Every time, just there's one funny thing that I would like to highlight though, while everyone is busy writing down, uh, is that every time I do this project, there is a slight variation of points. For me, there is a slight variation of points because at different magnitudes, different times of the day, our mind process might be thinking differently. Don't worry too much about it. That's why doing this project, it gives you a better understanding about yourself in terms of how you can lead others. Don't worry that sometimes your point might be, oh, I got like 20-ish points, and then sometimes I only get like 10 points. Don't worry. Some people may have awful scores. Now, once you're done with this, 18 questions or something like that, you can actually add those points up. Uh, although this is not the official way of doing so because you're supposed to do all the questions here until 48. But then this is just a start. At least get you moving. Once you get moving on doing these questions and quiz, then you move on to the next remaining questions and then you get a result. Now, getting that result is very important because that is your basis of your speech, okay? your basis of your speech, because you focus on your leadership style and share some aspects of it, okay? If you are unable to find your primary one, if the most of the points are similar and there's no outstanding one, don't worry. Those are kind of your primary leadership styles too. You can still touch, pick one and share, or you can share three of them. But think about a five to seven minute speech, do you have sufficient time? So now because of time, I'm actually going to let everyone, please go to the website, download the projects, start doing the points. You might get more interested to know more about this stuff. And at the end, now after you do that, you have this kind of leadership style that will appear in front of you. The best experience is to do online. Okay, I will show you the best experiences to do online because they help you to tally it. Now, once you get this, all this type of leadership styles, remember, read it carefully, okay? Read the one that represents you most. When you get the point system, it should show which leadership style you are belonging to. Once you have that, like for me, I'm a very innovative leader. I love different ideas. I am kind of like the craziest innovative person in the whole HK89, whereby I think about crazy stuff. But then I'm also kind of, if you look at down, I'm more like kind of like a coaching style as well. I also coach people. Uh, I have a mentee, a couple of mentees here in this room right now. I'm also a coach in type. So I prefer to kind of let people to be empowered to learn new things. So this is my first primary one is more like innovative. And then my site is actually coaching type. So you identify your primary one, and then you identify maybe your secondary ones, the one that's close to the top grades. Then you will have understanding about what are your key features of your leadership. Now, here's a question though. When you are here, you may have three leadership styles that's similar in scores. Does it mean that you are fixed on those three? No, okay? The reason why we are reading this different types of leadership style is that we identify ours, share some leadership styles that we have done. And then you ask yourself one simple question. Do you want to be this type of leader or something different? Okay, it's entirely up to you. Like for me, I would like to be focusing on being affiliated because I'm pretty weak on that. 
I'm more like a one-man band sometimes. So I want to be that kind of leader. How? Then you can think about listening to different stories from those related to this section and learn from them. Although this is more identify your leadership style, but you can proceed on further. Don't be limited by just a quiz of, oh, you are supposed to be like this. No, this is for you to understand, share experts, and ask yourself a question. Do you want to be this type of leader? If you want, go ahead, go and strengthen it. If you don't want, then focus on how you can improve and refine your skills. So it gives you a choice in some way. Now we read on an effective use of leadership. We usually use daily examples. Many members will be thinking, I don't have examples, where should I go? Now I want to see many members think about your daily conversations, your daily communications, or maybe your work life. These are the examples that you can use with your leadership. If you're running out of materials, these are the best resources to find. Or even when you're chatting with your friends, having a dinner with good buddies, your conversations, your communication actually kind of shows a bit of leadership style. Are you the one that's like the party man animal? The one that's like the soul of the whole crowd? Or are you just sitting at a corner trying to focus on what sort of conversations you want to say? Now, that's why we focus on understanding your leadership style and communication style as a package to talk about today. Because these two are quite interrelated to each other. Okay? And that's also one of the reasons why most of the path will have this two as their electives or rather saying re required projects in, in the path itself. Most of the path will have these two components, either or or both, because we want to practice our communication skills and leadership skills. Now, after you review it, make sure you do your checklist, check whether you have done it, remember the criteria, do your questionnaire, uh, schedule your speech, I believe everyone can do it. Now move on to doing it about this part is what I want to focus on. Write your speech, include information about your preferred leadership style, as well as styles you would like to cultivate and how. Remember the point whereby I said, don't be limited by just what we are after we identify ourselves, but what we can be. This is whereby it comes in play for a checklist. Now, obviously, some members will be thinking about, oh, I, I don't feel like sharing my stuff. Then share the ones that you like. It's, it's just a more like a practice. Some members may be feeling uncomfortable. Don't worry. Feeling uncomfortable is fine because you're stepping out of your comfort zone. You want to talk about something that you never really exposed yourself before. Don't worry. That's the purpose of what this speech is. Letting you test the waters. And finally, rehearse your speech, usually a basic protocol uh, to do anything because rehearsal improves your confidence, which is one of the key competencies. And then after which, remember to let your evaluator have this evaluation form, understanding your leadership style. Read it, let them understand it. Have a conversation with the evaluator is definitely crucial, okay? Best prefer to have an evaluator that has done this project than to have someone that has not. Reason is very simple. Because you have someone that has done it, they will be in clear knowledge of what leadership styles there are and how your straight speech can reflect on your understanding about yourself. Now, highly recommend that. But I don't mean that you shouldn't find someone that has not done this project. You can but if that person is doing this as an evaluator, make sure, and I highlight, make sure that person understand the objectives of this project. Let them share some ideas. Remember the page about related to different types of leaderships here, identify your leadership style. Let them have a page of them. Let them understand, oh, there are so many leadership style. Okay, now I know where my focus is. Now, after which have the point system evaluation evaluators have done and then send it back to you. You upload onto the base camp. Uh, that is a folder for you to put in ePortfolio. And then that can be a reference for your vice president of education 
your president or your secretary because they are your base camp managers. So currently we have done a bit of analysis about what this project is about. Everyone's still okay so far? If you do, please give me a thumbs up. And I do encourage everyone to switch on webcam because it'll be much more fun in that way. Now we have dissected a bit about what this project is about. Now we are gonna have a demo speech though. So they let you understand how this speaker actually approach this speech. And we have an evaluator that's focusing on her speech itself. Now we have two distinguished Toastmasters in this room that I, I was originally the evaluator, but I would like to give the chance to sh show this distinguished Toastmasters that because you have done it, I would like you to also help if you want to. Would Julie, both Julies would like to help on this one? It's up to you. Otherwise I will be evaluator, I'm fine with it. So would Julie Dahl want to start first as an evaluator for this speech? Do you have the evaluation form? Okay, thank you. Now, may I welcome our demo speaker up the stage? Now, where is our demo speaker? Is she there? Sandy? Um, I need to, uh, there, are two, there are two things I would like to say. First one, I would like everybody to rename yourself. Please help me to do this. Please help me to rename yourself. As you rename yourself, I will really appreciate that because uh, it's easier for us to do this uh, when we invite you in the panel discussion. And second thing would be, I would like to say we might need to make the last minute adjustment because the previous time I cannot reach our demo speaker. So no I would like to, yeah, so I, I would like to say for the time and also for the purpose of the training, we might skip the today's first Know Your Leadership Style demo speaker and evaluator. Oh, okay. Sandy, 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 oh, Sandy, 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 before you make any decisions, uh, let, let me correct that. Okay, so okay. we have our demo speaker that's missing in action. Don't worry, I am the backup speaker. Okay? Okay. So, so now, okay. Uh, so is Julie ready? I will actually mention my title speech name. So letting you know, at least I have that speech prepared anyway. Okay, okay, so thank you very much. So for- No, let, so let for me, let me handle it, Sandy, please. Okay. Okay, so Julie, okay with that? Julie Dahl? Sure. So my speech title related to this speech is the name title, Servant Leadership. Aaron Leong, Servant Leadership. Seven leadership, Aaron Leong. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever feel or felt that you are getting burnout? How many of you do feel burnout every day? Raise up your hand. I don't see the flame in you, right? I don't see the flame oozing out of you, but I do feel burnout. Now, the reason why is very simple. Now, many of you think that it's a very good thing to be two division directors and one district officer in three districts. Now, I feel so tired within it, but I realized that is the reason for this. Now, when I was doing this questionnaire, I discovered that I am kind of a server leadership, but where can I find the server leadership from? I, I realized that I am more on the coaching and more on the innovative, and finally, the last one is actually focusing on being democratic. Now, with this free leadership that's actually kind of covering me, my main one is actually being innovative. I love different ideas. Different ideas in mind, great job. What do you mean by innovative? Innovative in being always thinking about new ideas out of the box. I remember during the time when I was traveling around the world, doing speeches like Marion actually is here to prove that actually I remember visiting different clubs and I always do this looking at the phone hey how are you doing today oh welcome fellow Toastmasters and stuff now that is back in 2015 where online is still not a thing and when I was doing that I I was actually thinking about all this innovative stuff about how we can excel our presentation skills and how we can excel all this leaders to become better leaders. Now, we always have different ideas that are in mind. 
being innovative is thinking about out of the box to solve the problems that are there. Really, it's there. I'm just being a bit dumbstruck because we are feeling a lot of different disabled individuals or people working around the world. And I can't even go for a proper meeting. Now I need to think about something out of the blue and I need to lead my team out of that. So what to do next is to actually think about new ideas. I need to think about some fresh and they were, I, oh, Aaron, don't do this. It's actually really tiring, it's annoying and stuff like that. Well, we always have to think the questions out of the box. So I lead my team to think about new ideas such as online attendance, traveling around the world, getting speakers, etc. Brilliant, it turns out extremely well. Downside, I'm sure some of you in this room will definitely know what happens. Aaron, we hate you. Why hate me? I didn't do anything wrong. You are making our clubs losing a lot of membership fees. Why? What have I done? I'm just telling people to go online. There's nothing wrong. And my whole team actually supports it. That's why we hate you and your team. Why? Because with the online attendance, people don't come anymore. People just go online showing themselves. Now that's where I realized that the innovative can have a double-edged sword. Even when you have different ideas, you need to make sure that you have some people that backs you up, explain everything. So that was a crisis at one side, but after which I need to think about a different idea. How about this? Let's do an experiment. Let's do it maybe milder, let people experience it like table topics or maybe minor storytelling. Everyone share stories. And we turn the two hours meeting to just in half an hour. Worked perfectly fine. So innovation actually brings change. Change the mindset, change to different ways of thinking, and also helps in leading a team. Because they are only shown with the whole product before they start to buy in. No, that doesn't explain why I'm truly burned out as I start. I started with no flames out there, right? Because I do feel very tired because I have to be the second type of leadership, which is called democratic. Now, how many of you actually watch Trump these days? You know, the politicians having a very fun time online. Now, when we have democratic stuff, great thing about leadership style, you're able to make sure that everyone is happy about it because we have discussed this. Now think about what happens if they disagree with you. Delays, 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 delays. Now that's exactly what happens. I was actually feeling very exhausted when I have to talk about, I have this plan, A, B, and C, delegate. Now, members are saying, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do that, do this, do that. Happens in real life, happens in Toastmasters, happened in my life too. What happens next? Six months passed. Plan A is still not there. Plan B is still not there. And plan C is still not there. Oh. What I want, even with the brilliant ideas, it's not possible to carry out because we focus too much on agreeing with every single one idea. That's why if you're interested, do one of the level three projects. No, level one of the projects called reaching a consensus. Please do that, helps you a lot more, okay? But being democratic makes me feel so exhausted that my passion starts to swine and mining becomes, start to, becomes a bit burnout. I start to feel bad about myself that I'm not a good leader. I lost all my confidence within that one period. Finally, the last opportunity, the last type of leadership. Remember the mention I thought about? I mentioned about being kind of democratic. I mentioned a bit about, I'm also a bit of a coach. Now coaching is the last attribute that makes me still being here this day. Now, the reason why is very simple because every word that we say impacts life. I'm leading two teams 
actually free. And what makes me feel strong every day is the moment whereby I see people being empowered. I have three teams leading with lots of different projects. And every time I see them, wow, I'm impressed. You can do it on your own. And they always say thank you and say, thank you for empowering me because you give me the necessary materials to try and leap forward. It gives me one thought, one thought in mind that all these three different types of leadership can be combined as one. And it makes us go a long way. Leadership is a trait that can be trained. It doesn't mean that it has been well born within. But once you realize this leadership traits and apply to real life, you're able to find the strengths and the balance among them. Being a coach allows me to feel that giving back to the community makes me feel empowered too. Now, being democratic allows me to understand different views and making me execute without any grievance among the crowd or the team. And finally, the last one, the last most important one, element of all, which is my main one, innovations are there to solve or bring change. You need to have extreme patience, which coaching and democratic leadership actually has together. So ladies, ladies and gentlemen, what is your leadership style? How do you apply it in real life? Do you know that there's a difference between a leader and also a manager? Now, once you do this project, you may understand more. Back to you. Okay, so I just do a role playing of crazy stuff. How, thank you, Aaron. Now, <laughs> now we actually have a demo speaker here, I think. <laughs> but no worries. Uh, but we have done the speech. So Julie, do you need any more time? We, we have two Julies here, just in case. Two Julies can evaluate me, I'm fine. <laughs> but no, I'll, I'm happy to go ahead with, I'm okay. happy to go ahead with the evaluation when you're ready. Yeah, sure. So now I'll pass the stage. Let's welcome our evaluator for my speech, leadership style, servant leadership, Julie Dahl. Thank you, Aaron, for a very engaging speech that was relatable. The thing I liked most about your speech, I'm going to start with my highest recommendation, uh, my highest commendation first, is the thing I liked most about your speech was that you met the objectives. Your objectives were very clear. Your objectives were to introduce your leadership style and explain the impact on yourself and others. And you met that in a very engaging way. I like the way you used your hand gestures. One of the problems with Zoom is that if your hand gestures aren't prominent and big, you tend to lose them. And you used your hands and your voice very, very effectively. I like the way that you introduced your speech with a question and it wasn't a rhetorical question. You actually waited until the audience engaged with you before you continued. And that was a great introduction. When you were doing your speaking about your leadership styles, you gave us the leadership style, you gave us an anecdote, you gave us the effect, and that was very well structured. But what I would have liked to have seen, what I would have liked to have seen is some signposting in your speech. It would have been really nice to hear at the beginning, I am going to talk about my three main leadership styles and then go on to do it. And just give us that idea of how much content we're gonna be facing. So that would be my first recommendation. My other two recommendations are quite minor, but could take the speech to a next level. Firstly, there are three words you use as filler words. Now, actually, and stuff. And I would suggest that you look at your use of those words and try and minimize particularly the now and actually, and maybe find a better word than stuff. And also, right at the start, you said, when I did the questionnaire. Now, we all know what you're talking about because we've just gone through the questionnaire with you. But as a speech, it would have been nice to have some context around that. And then one challenge for you, right at the end, you introduced new material in your last sentence. Let's try and avoid doing that. 
And also, and again, so importantly on Zoom, try and maintain eye contact by looking in the camera rather than looking at the people. But very engaging speech. Love the way that you actually met your objectives and tied it back to your introduction and to your title. Thank you, Aaron. Let's go around applause for Julie. Extremely competent evaluation. Uh, really spot on on my critics and I will definitely take it into consideration. Now, the next step that what Julie would do is that she will send me the evaluation forms and after which I will upload to the base camp. Now, one of the things that I would like to highlight to you, everyone, is that you know that every evaluation is actually divided into two key pieces of paper. Now, the first page actually focus on the general comments. Now, general comments, people may be confused about two things. Now, some people will be like, you may want to work on and to challenge yourself. Now, this is the common question that many members will actually ask, like, oh, what's the difference between work on and challenge yourself? Now, I'm going to throw the ball to Julie, our, our Julie in, in Hong Kong. Now, Julie, what's your interpretation on these two wordings of you may want to work on and to challenge yourself? Amir yourself. Thank you very much, Aaron. And it's a really challenging question. And I'm going to answer your question by giving you an example of how Julie Dow evaluated your speech. So there's this stark difference there. When you say you might want to work on, these are the suggested improvements of your speech. On the other hand, when we say you might want to challenge yourself, Julie demonstrated that by saying, you could take your speech to the next level by. So this is an extra tip, which is saying on your next speech, you might want to consider additional attributes or techniques to bring you to the next level of a speaker. Did I make myself clear? Mm -hmm. Pretty clear. That, let's go around applause for Julie on that part, I'm explaining, because this is some of the confusion that many members will have uh, really, really stuck at these two terminologies, especially well, what's the difference and, and, and they will got, got stuck there. Now, the next page will be more important too is on the evaluation forms. Now, some of the evaluators might be very different. This is just a guide. Now, what Julie has demonstrated, our, our evaluator has evaluated me, Julie Dahl. She has actually focused on, on this points and clarity part and also focusing on different various examples. Now, some of the evaluators might do it differently by actually highlighting the points that they want to talk about. Let's say, for example, if they're giving four, three, and five, there are, there are points that's less than like three or two, one. They will only focus on those aspects and focus on it because we, evaluation wise, we only have three minutes. So, some of the members actually focus or evaluators focus on the points of improvement. Now, this is important for you as an evaluator to talk with the speaker about what do you want me to focus on? Be specific on that. Now that will be very important. I know that I missed this step with Julie, but she read my mind in some way, don't worry. <laughs> but it's really important for you as a guide to start off with this piece of paper first. Then, then when you get used to it on evaluating this sort of speeches, then the next thing to evaluate would be totally competent. This is only just a minor add up. And now I'll conclude this session with the next one, which is the panelist discussion. Now the panelist discussion, I would like to welcome Sandy up the stage. Now Sandy, feel free to lead the stage and ask anyone any questions related to this project so they can share some tips and advice on how to work on it. To you, Sandy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before I move on, so we will have eight to 10 minutes. We will have eight to, uh, eight to, it's like eight to 10 minutes, a uh, short discussion about, about level two, about this project. So basically if you are answering the what question, so please make it short, like 30 to say, 30 to 60 seconds. 
and then I will ask a question and then you could raise your hand or you could unmute yourself and answer the question. So basically we have one people to answer the question and the question will be related so far will be about knowing your leadership style. So that's the basic rule. We have like eight to eight to five minutes to talk about this. Okay. So, so could I encourage you to unmute yourself and turn on your turn on your video and audio? So at the same time, that when I ask question, then I ask question, you are welcome to answer the question. So the first question would be for the people who already work on this project. Uh, I would like to know that the first question, how do you prepare for this project? You are welcome to unmute yourself. Could I, uh, okay, for example, could I invite Angela or any, uh, anybody who kind of like type in the chat box, let me know that you have worked on this project. So do I know how will you prepare for this project? Maybe I'll start with Julie. Maybe that, that's uh, Julie Lee. Uh, would you like to start off by answering that question? Because you're super proficient. I'm your favorite person tonight. Thank you very much, Aaron. So I'm going to talk about it in terms of my experience. When I was doing this project, before I even did it, I had to reflect on my different leaders, leadership roles. And so I focused on, because I've worked in several countries as a senior manager. So I focused on what do I want to bring out to my audience and what do I want to impart to them? Once I knew about that, and it's got to be something relatable to my audience, then I knew exactly what I had to present. So in my actual presentation, I talk about my leadership style when I was working in the Philippines. And then I spoke about my leadership style when I moved into Australia. And the last one was a different kind of leadership style when I moved to Hong Kong. That way people can see the, because what I wanted to explore or to impart to my audience was we too as leaders change as the environment changes and as the people we lead changes. Back to you. Thank you very much. So if anyone would like to say, how would you like to prepare the project? May I invite Elizabeth Jordan, have you done this project and share with us about how will you prepare for this um, Know Your Leadership Style project? Elizabeth, thank you. Um, hello, fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. Um, I prepared quite differently for this one, I, I will tell you. Um, I work in the corporate world and one of the things we did was to do an analysis of our leadership styles using the Myers-Briggs um, preferences. So, I mean, this looks at the preferences, as I said, in your, in your of leadership style, your way you get your energy from, do you prefer, prefer to work in a logical way? How do you relate to people? This is a different style. So my, my, I don't know if any of you have done Myers-Briggs, but mine is an, I'm an INTJ, and each of those letters, INTJ, says something about my leadership style. So I, I actually spoke about this and shared how that leadership style, very much suited to the corporate world, was different to the sort of servant leadership that one has in the voluntary sector. So that was quite nice to contrast the two. So that's the approach I used. So I, I, didn't, I did actually do the questionnaire, but I decided to do something a bit differently because obviously one does these, you know, several times, you know, this projects you do several times, your leadership style. So that was the, my, the, my approach to how I did this project. So to summarize, I still was able to pull out my features and the benefits of those features, but I use a different tool rather than the, the Toastmasters tool. And that's the flexibility I believe that Pathways um, affords us um, when we're doing these projects. Wow, thank you very much. And also I would like to know about the difficulties or difficulties or challenges when you work on this project and know your leadership style. So could I invite 
advice like who has done this and you really have difficulty in this? What's your difficulty when you work on this new year literature style project? Should I invite like who has done this? Okay, Julie, Julie. Julie, thank you. I've done it four times. And I think that's my biggest challenge is when you have when it's the project appears in multiple paths, just like Elizabeth said, you have to find a way of refreshing it. When I first did it, I did it in person. The second time I did it, I was challenged to do it online. And with the in person one, I did it by talking about leadership spectrum. So I talked more about leadership styles in general, and then came down to mine. So I was able to use the stage to say, we have the bureaucratic on one side and the laissez faire on the other. And here we are in the middle with my favorite style of coaching. Translating that to an online audience was a challenge. And the way I solved the challenge, I'll just show you very quickly. The way I solved the challenge was by using virtual backgrounds. And I had virtual backgrounds, oh, which unfortunately I've deleted, oh no, they're there, where I had the bureaucratic style, the laissez-faire style, and the coaching style as I spoke through the different parts of my speech. And so that was a challenge, translating it to an online world and then finding a solution for that. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. Difficulties actually the way for us to find solution as well. So other than this, so anybody have this different or similar challenges when you work on this project? Know your leadership style? I, I won't, would you want to share with us? So Penny or Judy? So, okay. Okay, so uh, for the time, if the challenge is not that okay, but I will pause interesting for this. I would like to move on to the third question for this one. How long uh, do you prepare this speech? Uh, know your leadership style that outside to semester first. So do you prepare your speech, practice your speech outside the to semester first? Why not throw the question to Ivan? I know Ivan okay. is standing there. <laughs> okay. Ivan. When you, before you uh, deliver the speech, uh, know your leadership style, do you practice or prepare this outside Toastmaster? Good evening to everyone. It's evening time over here. Uh, I'm in Singapore. So um, basically I haven't completed that project yet. Yeah, because my first path is presentation mastery. But let me give an example of usually how I do my speech. Uh, usually, I do it one day before, within 24 hours. But before that, I will have a lot of thoughts in my mind. So on the before 24 hours, I will write down in a script based on three uh, important points, introduction, body, and the closing. And I will split three minutes to the introduction, three minutes to the body, and one minute to the closing that I will have each point down. The rest is more impromptu. That's, that's how I do, because I'm, I'm quite busy in work as well. So most of the time, I may not be able to write down a full script. Yeah, so that's how I do my speech usually. Back to you, Sandy. Okay, thank you very much. So before uh, for the panel discussion, for the time we can reach us that uh, simple, uh, simple discussion for the first part, so Aaron, I would like to check with you first that we move on to, uh, we'll save all the things to the end of the section for the Q&A or we'll move on to the second part, know your communication style first. I think that the, uh, we will wrap, uh, wrap this part up. And then if you have any questions related to understanding your leadership, please remember to type in to the, the chat room so that after the entire session, ask any questions related to understanding your leadership style and communication style together just to consolidate all the questions. Would that be fine with everyone? Okay. So we'll, we'll move the part to the second session because we, we have Ivan that has been there preparing his speech already soon. So we will actually do a light dissection about the second part, which is related to understanding your communication. Now, same protocol for everyone who is in this room right now. Please type your understanding of the objective of this speech, 
usually we have to start with this so that we can test your knowledge and preparations. So what is the objective related to understanding your communication style? Feel free to type into the chat box. I'm seeing no one typing. <laughs> now in short for understanding a communication style is really related to, as the word implies, communication style, there are different types. And it, it actually focuses on how your communication style impacts the relationship among you. Now this is very important, not just on others, but it's also on you. Why would I actually focus that uh, on this part is because this project to me, among level two is one of the most important project of them all. Because we do chat every day. We do communicate every day. Even during this presentation or workshop, we are still communicating. Now it impacts people on how they see us, whether we are professional, whether we are being approachable or whether we are just being not too nice. When we have different types of people with different communication style, it's always essential to identify theirs and yours and how yours impact theirs and vice versa. So let me just share a screen. Simply speaking, this project itself, you will notice that also more than half of the projects will actually contains this, more, more than half of the path around saying. We have diamond leadership effective coaching that actually focus on that motivational presentational and as well as visionary communication now you may wonder why there are other parts that doesn't focus on it when it's very obvious especially like team collaboration now team collaboration you need to talk with people right you need to communicate and why is it not practiced there because it's actually focused on the other elements in play the reason why it's not there it's because it focus on something more deeper called cross-cultural understanding. Now that element, that project itself, we'll talk about it another day, but this is another way of communication style. So they actually branch it out to be more focused on that part because it's not just a simple project. Now we also see that persuasive influence, why it doesn't have it then? We, are, we need to communicate to be persuasive somehow, but why is it missing? is because it actually focuses on the skill set of listening skills first. Now, that's a reason why every path is designed in this way. Now, we have spent a lot of time to analyze and research, and we come up with some of the findings. That persuasive influence, we always forget the elements of listening to others. Remember, this path itself is focusing on you affecting others. Now, most of the people who actually pick this path are generally members who might be not good at listening skills because they only focus on telling what people do. I want to get you to do it, but I forget to listen to what you say. So they actually focus on active listening. So that's also one of the reasons why compared to understanding your leadership style, it has one less path in there. There was only like one, two, three, four, five. Five of the paths that is actually doing that. It doesn't mean that it's not important, it's there but it's actually hidden somewhere, okay? Now, understanding your communication style actually focus on really self and others on impact. Speech on communication style and impacts relations. Learn about different styles and identify your style, okay? Same as understanding your leadership style, you will realize that it's the similar characteristics compared to leadership style because you still have to do some exercise. Now, when we actually look into the part about the path itself, I'm going to hasten it. Let me see this part. Yes. I'm going to share the screen again. This project itself is actually taken from the Understanding of Communication Style Level 2 project. Now, you see that it's the same protocol as Understanding Your Leadership Style. The difference of approach 
uh, actually the same approach. First of all, identify purpose and overview. Okay. It's impact on your professional and or personal relationships. So your story may be related to that. Now, if you're feeling uncomfortable, don't worry. As, as mentioned, there are some members who do not like to share their own stories too much, especially it's still level two. It's not like it's level four whereby everyone is starting to get very comfy about that. In level two wise, some members are still getting a bit stage fright, doesn't want to share their stories. We have to understand that part. But remember, this part doesn't show that it should not be a report, okay? It should not be a report of your findings. It's not just doing an exercise and, oh, yes, uh, this is my style, full stop. No, we have to actually understand your style and after which how it impacts others. We want the stories on that, not a report about yourself. That's not the purpose of this project. When we go down forwards, same thing, surveys, before and after survey. And then you notice that there are different questions. This is the part whereby the piece of paper and the pen will come in handy. Same thing as leadership style. Leadership style has more questions to answer. It's just like MBTI, but communication style, it focuses more on yourself, your characteristics. So spend some time on doing this. Highly recommend it because it gives a more impact about yourself. Same number of questions that you see. I will strongly advise, please do it at your own time. And after which you will discover a few communication style, like direct, initiating, supporting, and ethical. So these are some of the common ones that they will actually find. Now for many members who have, who have known me for so long, I have been the one person that everyone knows. I'm being very blunt. I'm being very direct. I can kind of scold people out of the out of the blue. No, just, just being very direct and telling that this is what we want. Oh, this is something that you shouldn't do, etc. Now, this behavior is good and bad in some way. Good way, people don't bully you anymore. <laughs> now, in the past, I've been bullied, just saying. So that's the reason why I'm being very direct these days. Now, <laughs> in the bad side, negative side, being direct is confrontational, meaning that your members or people that you're talking to will have some sort of defensive mechanism towards you. So they are not feeling that you're a very approachable, sociable. They will just be a bit defensive. People don't like walls. They like rational discussions. So this is some way that where after I'm doing this speech itself or project, I start to understand more about myself. Then I become less confrontational and direct. Now, after you you realize that there are different types of communication. I will highlight this part. If you have, this is like, to me, it's like a golden nugget in the whole project. If you want to print screen, print screen this part. Uh, this is whereby you understand how this communicators actually plays a part in your role and your daily lives. Like this is like, to me, an overview in a nutshell. If I want to recall or reflect, this is the page that I want to go for. And after which, same thing, review and apply. Do your checklist. Discover your communication style questionnaire. Do it online, it's still fine. And finally, after which, read the evaluation forms so that you know what the evaluators are looking for too. Send the evaluation forms to your evaluator and let them get prepared. Best advice, pick someone that have done it, okay? Now wrap that Rivon everything up in 10 minutes. Now I want to see a demonstrator. We have someone that's really prepared standing there for the past 20 minutes. Apologies, Ivan. Now he has been very prepared for this speech. Now, well, now Ivan, would you like to give your speech title so that I can welcome you officially, formally, in a way as an MC? Okay. I just type in okay. uh, Ivan's speech title is Communication Style with Five Elements. Communication style with five elements. Demo speaker Ivan. Am I starting now? Yes, you can start now. Is there a timer? Timer is Sandy, right? Timer is yes, Sandy. I'm, I'm Sandy. I'm, ti I'm timing. Okay. So, my speech title for today, as you all heard from Sandy just now, communication style with five elements. 
Why do I want to link up a uh, five elements with communication style? One thing is because I'm a eating practitioner. But let's not talk about my story. Let's talk about my communication style today. And it could be yours. Before I start my, the rest of my speech, I have a question for everyone. Everyone join Toastmaster. Is it because you want to be a better leader? Type one in the chat now if you are. Wow, I saw a lot of one. Hey, how come there's a dot? <laughs> dot doesn't mean, okay? Or if you don't want to be a good leader, do you want to be a better leader, a better speaker? Type two if you want to be a better speaker. I saw a lot of person who type one and type two. So it means you want to be both, both a better leader and a better speaker. But no matter you type one or two, you definitely still need to be a good communicator as well. Communications is a two-way process for reaching mutual understanding through verbal, non-verbal and written messages. But do you know that your date of birth Tell us about your communication style as well. Based on a Chinese metaphysics tool called Ba Zhi, we are able to read a person's character, past, current, and future events. And of course, this includes your communication style as well. And today, I'm going to tell everyone how to identify your communication style based on Ba Zhi with five elements. And what's the five elements? They are the fire, earth, matter, water, and wood. Bazi is made up of eight numbers of elements. And to add them up and det determine which is your strongest elements, which is the one that you have the most, and they will be your key to communication style. First, we have matter. If you're strong in matter, your style is direct. You are a person decisive, competitive, independent, and confident. Because you are a time direct communication communicator. You are focused, result, and goal oriented, ambitious, and driven. Others may perceive you as a strong will or demanding. You like to feel in control and may become frustrated if it depends on others. You measure progress by achievement and successes is motivated by challenges. Fire, if you're strong at fire, initiating style is yours. You are sociable, enthusiastic, energetic, spontaneous, and fun-loving. Due to the nature of the person with an initiative communication style, you may be perceived as someone who talks more than listening. You are often perceived as self assured innovative, and persuasive. You like to feel accepted and is motivated by relationship. You respond strongly to praise and approval. Next, we have Earth. If you're strong in Earth, you're a supportive song. You are calm, steady, approachable, sincere, and gentle. Because the person with a supportive communication style dislike changes, you may appear indecisive. Most often, you're perceived of careful, patient, Due to your active listening skill, often people see you as a cooperative, dependable, and loyal person. You are often modest and prefer praise to be given privately, patient, and slow pace. You like a personal, relaxed environment. You put high priority on close relationship and does not like conflicts, but may mitigate if necessary. Next, wood. Anandical style. If you are wood, you are precise, exact, and logical. Because the person with an analytical communication style is systematic and task oriented And you are sometimes perceived as a professionist. You are organized, self belief purposeful, and diplomatic. You are motivated and rarely give an opinion unless asked. You are cautious and slow in your pace and like a structure and functional environment. Lastly, the water elements. 
why do I leave water elements to be the last? Because that's my style. I'm strong in matter. And water stands for adaptive. It's a mixture of the all four previous ones. Decisive, but adaptive. As a VPE in my club, I have to be decisive to decide on my club education directions. But I am adaptive enough to listen to various men members' suggestion, not be a dictator. My style is also an enthusiastic, but I control. I'm enthusiastic to complete my first path within three months, but I control my progress as my quantity equals to my quality as well. I am also fast in reacting, but at the same time, I'm calm. I'm a new Toastmaster as I joined in July and a new VP in my club. We also have a lot of technical issues in our club meeting, but I managed to stay calm in communication and help my new members to react with them with the right solutions. Lastly, my communication style, I'm precise, but flexible. I'm also a path mentor. I'm precise on my prodigy goal setting framework, but I'm flexible at the same time not to plan my goal into my prodigy's goal. So this is the communication style with the five elements. To close this speech, I give all of you a quote of mine. Communication can lead you to success, but it can lead you to failure as well. Knowing your communication style will allow you to use your strength to overcome your weaknesses. Back to Sandy. Thank you very much. Wow, that was a really good story about the communication of style. So, let me put that in first. Oh. I would like to check with everybody that we move on to the evaluator for this project for the knowing your communication style. So I would like to double check with evaluator for two people. I see response from Aaron or Julie Lee. Are you both comfortable to give the evaluation to our today's demo speaker of uh, Julie? Of it is okay. Julie? I'm just throwing to see whether you want to or not. Yeah, it's not so I actually sent Julie message. Are you okay? Or okay. I, otherwise, everyone see me and it becomes like I'm not handsome guy here. You know. <laughs> I, I, I've only seen it now. Oh, if not, then I would just evaluate. Okay. Okay. So, right. honor to be evaluating Ivan on this speech now. Related to this speech itself, from an evaluator's point of view, everyone has to focus on one simple thing. What is the purpose of his speech? Do you remember the purpose of his speech? His speech actually focused on highlighting the communication style of his with the elements of the five elements in the Chinese. Uh, I would say, what's that word for that? Um, that is it. Yeah, that, that, that kind of terminology. So he actually utilized something that is very similar or familiar among the Asian culture. So for that, when I see his title, it attracts me. Wow, is it a fortune teller suddenly coming in and telling me about my fortunes in some way? So he actually kind of created a very nice, interesting element and fulfilled his objectives of his speech. So give a round of applause for him first. Okay, let's do a wave. Now, why do I say he fulfills it? Because he actually identified his primary purpose. He also focused on the elements of five elements with his own communication style. Now, I really love about how he actually intertwined between it and give us a nice visual effect of fire, water, earth, etc. And it was like, wow, that's like relations with a characteristics with something that we all found natural, like in the nature. Now, this is one of the standing points by Ivan. Now, I want to challenge Ivan a couple of things. If you notice in Ivan's speech itself, I will notice most of the things that he explains the leadership styles more for us. Now, from a newbie perspective or someone that's new to leadership, you have done an extremely great job. Let me just tell you, you have done an extremely great job. We all understand from the illustration you've given us. 
Now, from the evaluator's point of view, we want who have done the speech itself, we would like to see more, not just telling us about the leadership style, which caught our interest, but focusing on how this elements in play plays a part in your life. What I hear in the second letter part of your speech is actually focus on your personal encounters in only just one to two sentences and wrap up your characteristics. I would like to see more stories and how the impact actually really meant. You mentioned about, okay, you have this situation, it impacts you, how? Can you show us an example? We would like to see more examples related to what you say. Examples actually help us to visualize that impact more clearly and visually. So that's one challenge I would like to propose to Ivan when you mentioned about those impacts and changes, show a daily example, something that we can relate to or something that you want to share with us rather than your thought process. That will be the challenge point. Now, challenge point number two is that I would definitely suggest other than just standing, giving speeches itself because it relates to five elements. Now for members, let me ask everyone in this room right now, Elizabeth, Julie, do you know what five elements are? No, I, I mean, Julie doll. I know Julie Lee definitely know because you're in Hong Kong. Okay, for you two ladies who are definitely from abroad, you know about it. Okay, so this is, okay, I, I, I thought it would be kind of hard for understanding. So it will be, my focus point is that I would like to see a PowerPoint slide. A PowerPoint slide, maybe it shows the five elements that interchange in a graph. Or maybe, you know, behind you, you have a nice poster, right, about yourself. Now, I would like to see a chart that shows the five elements. So it shows us how it intertwine. That way you give us a visual impact of, oh, so this five elements actually plays a part in our leadership style and communication style too. Yeah, okay, that's some approach that we can think about. Now, the last one that I would like to challenge Ivan on is that I know your script is just beside your camera. Now, because your eye contact is actually looking something somewhere beside the camera, definitely there. Now, same, same advice from Julie, applicable to here focus your eyes to the camera more often. Same thing, just like, usually when I got used to seeing people below, okay, I need to focus there. So sometimes I may forget, don't worry. Now I would like you to focus on the right so that it shows more confidence. The more eye contact that is on the side that is not on the camera shows less confidence and people will be less inclined to connect with you. That's one challenge for you as well. But overall, great speech. I love the creativity and fire elements. I never thought that is actually possible, but you have nailed it. I would maybe attempt and mimic next time. Okay, great job. Great job to okay, I pass, to, pass, pass, pass back to Sandy. Thank you very much uh, for the evaluator for this. Hope, hope that we will all learn together about how to uh, improve ourselves, especially for this project. And for the host, I would like to remind everybody we are going to move on to uh, the panel discussion. Uh, and then we will going to move on to the Q&A section. And still, I will host this panel discussion and Q&A section. I will actually still encourage you to switch on your audio and video because it's almost at the end of today's training. You are actually welcome to talk about anything for the, the time. For the rule, it's almost the same uh, for a short discussion. If a uh, short discussion, and I, I type the question here, and then I will pick one or two to answer the question. So now we are focusing on communication. Know your communication style. So my question for other people, you are welcome to answer is how long? How long do you take the time? that to prepare for this project. If you have worked on this, how long do you take time to prepare for know your communication style? Know your communication style. So could I have anybody volunteer first? Or like Rosalie, have you done this? How long have you take how long would you take time to do this project? Could I have Rosalie? Have you done this before? Uh, actually, I don't need to do this one. I need to do the uh, leadership one. So it will be my next assignment. So uh, that's why I, so I use, um, so I do a questionnaire on anagram first, and then to see rich style of, of the anagram. And then I uh, listen to somebody else, uh, they do that presentation. And today I come to here to do uh, see this workshop. 
and then the next one I will have uh, my my work on that one. I think a few days, or maybe actually I, when I start to, to think about it is uh, two weeks ago. Okay, Sam. Because for me, my is innovative planning place. I actually have no this project in my level two actually. So could I have anybody who have done this know your communication new project and then may we know how long you prepare for this? Or Ivan, could we know how long you have you prepared for this project, Ivan? Or if you are talking about the one that I did just now, it's around two hours. Wow. Yeah, but the pre this is actually a re revision of the one I did. Um, which the one the one I did initially was over time by 10 seconds. So I revise it with the content reduced uh, in two hours. The previous one I did was within 24 hours because uh, when I was going through the uh, project list, the project information, I find that it's very relatable to five elements. That's why I planned the five elements into the thing. So actually it's quite fast for me within 24 hours. Wow, you are you are fast-handed, fast-handed people who prepare for speech. And then uh, I would like to ask everybody for the question would be the second one. I would like to encourage you to share uh, more insight about this would be, have you tried both leadership and communication style, the project before you execute the project and then before you speak it out? So, before you speak it out, have you tried these? So could I invite uh, Angela or Elizabeth? Have you tried this before you work on this project before? Elizabeth, Jordan? Um, yes, actually, I wouldn't mind commenting on the question before because I would say it took me about a month to prepare for my my speech. I'm fascinated, the gentleman. Um, is that Ivan can do such a marvelous job in a couple of hours. I certainly couldn't. What I tend to do is I sort of, I think of the project and I mull it over in my mind and I walk a lot and I run a lot and I think about it. And then I, I sort of, then I put it together. So I would say for me, it was about a month and I've done both communication and leadership in, in these different, in these four paths. I've, I've got another two paths going, but lower level. Um, and yes, I, I do try it out because, for example, in the leadership, I my 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 job in the corporate world, I'm a research scientist by training, but I'm at the moment I'm working in project management. So I actually do that. So I, I have that direct style. But obviously, in my club, where I have um, a different role, I have a more supportive style. So I do try them. And I try to bring concrete examples of what I do both at work and as a Toastmaster to um, augment my examples as I give them. So to answer your question, yes, I do, I do try them out and I bring them with me when I'm giving the speech so that I say I do X, Y, Z. Um, so if I, for example, if I say I'm supportive, I will say I, I show my support by, you know, by mentoring or by listening, so I give a practical example of, of what I do. So that's my answer. Wow, so that was a very insightful answer to this question. And anybody would like to answer the question, how will you uh, execute them before you work on this project? Yeah, uh, for me, uh, when I'm doing my speech, for example, communication or leadership style, um, I will usually have my own leadership style first. Then I will write it down and then see whether I can, this, this kind of leadership I executed before. But I would also like to inject one more which I haven't executed before. So in that case, I will I research in the Google or research in the newspaper or magazine to get some information. So I will try both. One is that I have executed before the one and the other one that I haven't executed before. So that in that case, I will uh, talk about it and experience about it. Communication style, I think uh, the most important is the, our daily conversation with people. The daily conversation people, 
are also very important because uh, previously I usually mix speeches that will be very effective. But now to our daily life, I couldn't communicate well because I thought, oh, I better not speak much because um, uh, I have to prepare it. But on daily conversation, you can't do it because when you see your manager, when you see your colleague, you don't have to prepare, prepare it. Just uh, you know, say whatever you want to say. So my style is a little bit more direct. So I nowadays I'll change my communication style to be more objective, less subjective. You know, to make people and myself be a better life. <laughs> and that that that's all. Well, thank you very much. Well, for me, that uh, I learned from a very senior Toastmaster is that, that leaders are speakers. Why? Because leaders have to communicate every single day and every single way. So it's actually not that easy, but it, there is a pro, there is a tips for this. So for the panel discussion, actually I have my personal question just to ask everybody. So the last question for the panel discussion would be, how to evaluate those projects. I mean, uh, know your leadership style and know your communication styles effectively. I want to know uh, your, your experience, how to help the speaker to improve on these two projects to close the today's uh, panel discussion. So how do we help them to improve themselves when they work on these two projects? Could I have volunteer? Or can I invite Julie Dell to say, how do we improve? Or how do we help them to improve when they work on these two projects? Thank you. Thank you. To be honest, it's the same way I believe that every project should be evaluated. I believe that we should always evaluate against the criteria. Have the speaker primarily met the requirements of the project? With the evaluation forms, I find that it's really important to encourage speakers and evaluators to make sure they read the second page. Because in a lot of cases, the objectives or the key points that are going to be evaluated are the last two items on the second page. So when I'm talking to speakers before their speeches, I remind them that these are the things they're going to be looking for. And then secondly, and I think this is really important, and this is something that Aaron mentioned earlier, is that the, spe the speaker and the evaluator should speak, talk beforehand as to those areas where they want personal improvements. For me, my first three years of evaluations were more vocal variety. And every speech, regardless of the key objective, I had a secondary objective to make sure that I was adding in that vocal variety. And I think that's a real key that when you're dealing with a speaker, you need the project objectives and you need their personal objectives. And as an evaluator, if you can address those two, you're going to help the speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's a very experienced and valuable suggestion for, for us to learn to be a better evaluator. So anybody would like to answer the question? How do, how do we help them to become better when they work on these two projects? So if it's not, well, for me would be, my simple answer would be just try to help them to become better and then make the suggestion it's easier for them to take. And then that's for me, my answer. Then uh, as the host, I would like to close today's panel discussion. I would like to thank all of you who to stay to uh, the end of the training. And then actually we will move on to a QA and a section. q and a section means that you could ask almost all the assignment taker here, for example, today's trainer, Aaron. And also we have a demo speaker and also a demo evaluator. You actually, you can, you can everybody, you are welcome to talk about anything and ask questions if you like. So please, now you can do a next section. About five minutes and eight. Yay. Do you have any question? You can you are welcome to ask. Sure, sure, go. Please unmute yourself and ask. I just wanted to comment back on Ivan's statement, a couple of other statements about how long does it take to prepare a speech. 
I'm both Ivan and Elizabeth. It can take me anywhere from 10 minutes to a month, depending on the speech. And I don't really think it's something that you can actually put a time limit on. Sometimes an idea comes to you like this and you can just do it. Mm. Other times you need to use Elizabeth's process of mulling it over. For me, I always imagine my audience when I'm delivering a mm. speech, which type of audience would this match? And once I've got an idea of an audience in mind, I can often do a speech. The level four develop a vision and plan your vision one really was hard for me. And that is sort of the only way. I just wanted to add that comment in about timing on, on projects. Mm -hmm. It can vary. Can I ask a question, please? Sure, sure. Okay. Now it's the Q&A section. You can oh, ask. Okay. <laughs> you are... I, want, I wanted to ask about the role of mentoring your people in pathways to help them, you know, on, on their way. How much mentoring is done? in the various clubs? Talk. The question goes to... Um, anyone, Aaron, Aaron, yourself. I'm just interested to know, uh, because uh, the reason I'm asking the questions, two, twofold, is we, we have, we've got a Pathways um, champion, which is myself, but we've also got a mentor. So what happens, someone comes in, a new person comes in and they're assigned a mentor. And that person effectively, you know, hold their hands and help them and so on. And if they want to know the technical aspects of pathways or they need help and so on to training, that's where I would come in. So I just wondered if, you know, if you're using mentors and how is that whole process working, just to get a different perspective. Um, for, for my clubs, I think uh, being in so many clubs, I, I just give a universal answer. I was like, those clubs that actually have mentoring program, they usually do it around like either of these two methods. The first method is that they will have a pathways mentor team, members who have been mm. to pathways, and then they actually collect them to the, to the team, whereby VPs will approach them, which like to be a mentor, etc. Once they agree, then this pool will be there. Now, this group will be important, especially for new members who are just brand new to mm. pathways. This is the first methodology. Now, there are clubs. Now, the second method is there are clubs who are brand new and do not have members who have done like level twos, level threes, level fours. There will be definitely clubs like that. What is done is the mentor learns along with the mentee. Now the mentors are usually members who have been a Toastmaster for quite some time, at least more seasoned than the new members. You know, they are actually recruited into mentoring team, especially it happens in chattering clubs, new chapter clubs or struggling clubs. These are common for mentoring program. Now, if you do this method, Usually these members are having like one-to-one -one body system whereby they will actually improve mm. together. And the mentor will be like the pioneer to explore more about pathways. So this is one way, this is another way. Now I know that there are clubs like, for example, Julie's Club Hong Kong Toastmasters has a mentoring scheme. Now the mentoring scheme actually what member assigned to one and that is the mentor's responsibility to follow it. There are clubs that has the VP following on the mentors to follow on the members, etc. So pick the one that is more effective in your own culture, your own country. Mm -hmm. The one that works for your club rather than, okay, there are other clubs that do this so we can follow it. But for me, uh, I am part of a club in China. What I do in my team is that we have all those mentors bring like the star trainer. Like they mm. have to at least do like level twos and above. So they have a strict requirements to become a mentor. And after which there will be like a one hour coaching session every month at the very least with the mentee. So this mm. will be moderated by the VPE team. Mm. So like a VP mentor, mentee. So there are three people all the time. So this is like, to me, I think the more effective way because that is a third party that's supervising the whole thing. And that it actually evaluates my performance as an evaluator or mentor for that new member. And I can improve, she can improve, et cetera. So, but if you. Are, uh, Julie. Can, can, I, can I comment further? So go on. Okay, so I, I would like to comment based on the number of members in a club. So I have a club, and this one is the Hong Kong Toastmasters Club. It's a really old club. 
So we have a, so there's about less than 50 members. So what we do is we have a chief mentor and it's like part of the exco. And these guys are the ones who will assign a mentor to a newcomer. Now, of course, seasoned Toastmasters doesn't mean they are pathways specialists. They could be mm -hmm. BTMs under the old program. And these guys are part of the mentoring team. So in that case, we have a limited pool of pathways specialist and these people would come in if the mentors who are assigned to different members have got a problem and it's it's about technical problems and it's regarding pathways so they do connect you so that's the way we do with big clubs now i have a struggling club and they have at the moment eight members or nine members and this is a new club. So none of them are very well-versed in pathways. So I am the only one and I chartered this club. So I sort of stand as the pathways specialist. And this is where the difficult work comes in because every time there is a member, I do a one-on-one -on -one with that member to infuse and light that candle of interest and love for pathways and appreciate what it is. So that when they go out there and deliver their speeches, you will see that fervor burning. Mm. I hope that helps. It does. Thank you. Can I just add on to that? In my club, we mentor all new members for their first level. So whole of level one. And what we do with our mentor, mentors is we encourage them to do the Pathways Mentoring Program. And the third project in the Pathways Mentoring Project program is to mentor someone for six months, which works in really nicely with mentoring mm -hmm. someone through level one. Mm -hmm. So by that way, the mentors are also getting credit and learning. The resources in the Pathways Mentor program are fantastic, and it's giving them a great basis and a great relationship and a great and a good period of time with the new members. So that's how we do it in one of my clubs. Mm -hmm. That's great. So it's an incentive for the mentors as well. Mm. Uh, maybe I add in a little bit as well. So happened that uh, this afternoon, I just did a speech as well for mentoring. Um, ah. So as I mentioned just now, I, was, uh, I just joined in July and uh, my club is a new charter club. And as a new charter club VP, uh, I have to push myself. I'm definitely completely new. Two, two months ago, I don't even know what is path. I don't even know what is path, pathway. Does pathway have an S or no S? I don't know anything about this. But within three, three months, I pushed myself to complete my first path. Uh, one reason is because although our club just chartered with 20, 20, 30 members, but I feel that uh, we short of a bonding energy. We have a club sponsor, we have a club president, which are DTM, but um, they are busy on their own work. They are busy with their own work. So as a VP, I feel that it's my responsibility to uh, get familiar with the path. Okay, So eventually, when I finish my path, or actually before I finish my path, when I'm already at level four, I started to uh, broadcast to our group chat uh, who wants to be... Uh, I'm open to be a mentor for whoever who wants to be in a pathway, who wants to complete their path. Okay, so that's a way because now most of my men, my members, we're just a three months club. We just finished our third meeting. Uh, most of the members are just at level one. We just finished their icebreaker. So I can't expect to assign anyone else as a mentor. So I have to be mentor to everyone. So in my club, we have an official mentor and an unofficial mentor. So I'm an unofficial mentor to all my club members who want to do their speech, okay, their path. But I also have official uh, mentee who want to finish their uh, path within a short frame. Like example, I will give a uh, uh, goal. I will say, uh, let's try to finish your path in six months. Okay, so for those who can commit to this, we can establish a mentor and mentee official relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. This is also to see whether it's a fit or not. For those that is not, we have unofficial because when, whenever they have anything, any questions about path, 
I'm always open to answer them questions mm. with sharing session or one-to-one session. So that is my commitment. But I think it's only me. I don't <laughs> Thanks, that's my sharing. So any questions related to today's two classes uh, related to the leadership and also the communication, uh, we welcome that. Uh, we have Lewis, Thomas, Jim. Jim, you there? I think Jim is there. Or maybe he's busy. But yeah, feel free to ask about questions about related to this project. So it will be more helpful that way. Can I ask about the understand your leadership style? Because that is one of the projects I'm, I'm going to do. Because I'm starting my path two and I'm going into level two already. My, le my second path. So my second path is dynamic leadership. So definitely I have to do this project. So uh, I believe everyone is a leader in their own industry or whatever, but understanding their own leadership style is actually quite difficult. Like uh, communication, communication style, it can be how you, how you talk, how you communicate with your team. Can we use the same approach as a communication style towards preparing speech for the leadership style? Uh... Well, to answer that question, uh, let, let's explain why we actually focus on these two projects today. These two projects are kind of interrelated in some way or the other. Mm. In leadership, you need to have communication skills. In a communication skills, you have to have a bit of leadership trait. So in some way or the other, it's kind of interchangeable. But you realize that just now I was doing the analysis, we have more questions compared to leadership to a communication stuff. Now, the reason why it's very simple in terms of leaders is that uh, there's a saying, I'm not sure whether you, you know about this, is that uh, let's start with the basic one. A great speaker, uh, no, uh, a great leader may not, no, a great speaker may not be a great communicator, but a great communicator is a great speaker. Okay, this is level one approach. Now, the next one is that a great leader may, may not be uh, a great communicator but a communicator has traits to become a great leader. Now, in some way or the other, for me, I, when I actually do this project itself, I realize the difference in terms of uh, leadership is not just on communication skills. There are more than just communication skills. It actually takes a lot of different things. Communication, we focus on approaches, right? But leadership actually also has some opponents like listening, listening skills. We need to have kind of like charismatic, uh, some people are like to be authoritative. These are more like personality, trait, personality traits. Now, communication style is more like the application part of it. So we need to differentiate these two separately on that part. So I, I prepared the leadership. It takes me one month because I thought I know my leadership style. I thought. But when I do mm -hmm. it, it turned out to be a total different thing. I thought I was supposed to be like authoritative, you know, like, yeah, I am the, the person who to, have to approach me for perfect. No. Now I realize, oh, I'm not, I'm innovative. Like where, where is my ideas coming from? Like I don't even have ideas sometimes. So I start to discover more about the approach of where my ideas come from. Now the way of approaching the leadership style project actually focus on the things that happens within you every single day. Same as communication style, but more differently is that for the past few years, your leadership with a group compared to communication style is one-to-one. -one. To me, I think it's communication style is more like one-to-one, -one, more in-depth. But leadership style is like one-to-many. So you, you realize that the, the different groups that you approach, the working life, the Toastmaster life, or your friends group, it actually shows your leadership style in some way. So these are the ways to approach it to find all these examples in mind and whether you wanted to be that leader. Because for me, I never like to be an innovative leader. Reason is very simple. After being many years innovative, my ideas are always stolen. So I don't like to be innovative. <laughs> Not copyrighted. I, I feel like a slap on my face in some way. So I, I hate to be innovative, although I have lots of ideas, but. I don't want to. I want to become more authoritative. How dare you stole my ideas? I'm going to steal you. Like, like, I want to be that type of person in some way. So, yeah. So I'll just show you some examples of whereby you can actually approach it. 
uh, find examples that in your daily life, especially your working career, you you are mm. whereby you can find quite a lot of different traces. And when you do it, I, I would suggest you do the survey not once, mm. but twice. Now, the reason why is very simple. As I mentioned, I do this project, I do this speech at least four to five times already. Uh, the reason why it's simple, because I do 11 paths. So all the paths, they, they generally have understanding your leadership style. So I would always do it. And I realize the scores are always different at different stages in life. But also at different time zones. So this, is, this might be helpful for you to understand more. When you approach this, do not do once, do twice. Uh, one in the afternoon and one at the time whereby you feel relaxed. Because sometimes you feel mentally stressed. And then you may make different rational, irrational answers. So do twice and you compare the results, see which one matches you more. Although it's not listed in the brochure, but I think that after doing 11 paths, you do a lot of different times. Why are the scores always different? So I realized the difference, the timings. Sometimes I actually do it during lunch. I feel so stressed, so I just do it. And then <laughs> during uh, like dinner, okay, do it. And then at night, when up at 2 a.m., where I love to reflect on myself, I do it. Different results every time. So when I say so, different results, doesn't mean it's like too big of a difference, but similar. You know, you know when there are three leadership styles that are near close to each other in terms of points, then mm -hmm. there is only a slight variation of difference there. I think this is, I, I can agree with you. Because when I was doing my pathway recommendation, where they, they you can do some survey when to decide which path is more suitable for you. I actually did twice, different time zone, but it gave me different options. So I, I agree with you on that. No, it, it does happen. So, But don't worry, there's no right or wrong answers. Uh, especially in level two, I highly recommend to anyone who is every, everyone here in this room right now, be patient. No right or wrong answers, but it's just a discovery about yourself. Okay. Now, in Toastmasters, the traditional program is very different. Traditional program doesn't focus too much on this. Now, in Pathway, it does. So take some time on that. If you want to discover more, remember Toastmasters is just like a tool. There are many other softwares or programs out there mm. in the public mm. that are more advanced than this. Mm. This is just mm. to stimulate your interest in getting to know more about your leadership style. There are tons of leadership style out there. There's even a Buddhist leadership style. I'm not sure whether that's the right one, but I heard someone saying Buddhist, like using kind of cultural uh, so I mean, philosophy. Yeah, we would say um, this uh, kind of like heaven or angel-like boss, like uh, not a micromanagement. It's like from a good heart that you no know, give doesn't really give you restrictions, but expect outcome. You no, know, it's just like uh, we use this term. In Taiwan. Mm. Actually, I, I think the religion one is quite common because I actually came up with a five elements leadership style. Mm. Okay, uh, Elizabeth actually has something to ask. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make two, two very quick points. So first of all, I wanted to um, thank you, Aaron and the team for seeing this because it's the first time I've seen this level two um, deconstructed in this way. And I find that people who, when they get to level two, they struggle a lot with the communication style and leadership style. So I think your whole process is one that I hope I can borrow from to help enthuse my, <laughs> my sometimes skeptical um, colleagues. But I think it's very, very nicely done and, and really insightful. Uh, I was gonna say the other thing about using these, the power of knowing your communication or leadership style is when, for example, you're on the committee, say your, your leadership, your, your club committee, if you've all done that, you could look at your styles. So for example, if all of you are like, have got the direct style, you may be arguing nonstop, you're not gonna get anything done. If all of you are too supportive, you won't, you won't get anything done because you're always, you know, be nice. So it's really, it can be used in a subtle way to help enhance the performance of the team, which is how when, when we did our Myers-Briggs at work, we did so on a high performance team and we all looked at what different styles we had. And it was 
thankfully quite balanced. It also helped us to understand why, why some people just, you know, it's difficult because some people are big picture people in their style and some people are very detailed and the two can possibly antagonize each other. So only point I'm trying to make is that you can take the results one step further to understand your team dynamics. And I think that's the power of what things and pathways can help us to do. But my main point was to thank you, Aaron and the team, because I think this is really um, superb to see it done in such a, such detail and and such um, such interesting perspective. So uh, thank you for that. Okay, so when you use this, uh, as I mentioned, uh, please copyright to us just in case. Okay. <laughs> always, I oh, I always always mention your name in D seventy one. It's just so sad. It's just like okay. Oh no, 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 no seriously. We're very grateful for all your work in, in D71. We always mention your name and all of that. And I always, always believe in attributing you know, gratitude to people who have done things. And you're one of them. So definitely, I will say thank you to you and the team. Appreciate it. So yeah, so uh, this recording will be, uh, just letting everyone know, this recording will be shown on YouTube and then after which it will be compiled into series. The, the title of this series is Pathway 63. Now, Pathway 63, there are 63 different projects in the entire Pathway collection. We're going to do every single one, dissecting just like what we did just now, and also with demo speech, evaluation, and also panel discussion. Now, the purpose is very simple. Nowadays, many Pathway speech are not falling too much on the objectives. There are some paths or speeches that are really focusing on just reading the thumbnail of the objective and not even reading the manuals. We want to help to every member around the world to dig even further, dig deep into a manual so that we let people know, okay, the materials are there. We guide you to read it. We help you analyze it. So you are, we are saving you all the time that you're spending on analyzing it and giving you one of the perspective that you can use as a recommendation. We don't force you to say, oh, look, our methods are the best. No, we want you on the screen right here who's listening to this YouTube channel or this speech itself, that you can discover your way of spe speeches and also how to prepare for this project. So I thank you everyone today. Uh, we have, thank you, Julie, two Julies. Uh, also thank you, Ivan, especially Sandy, who have been working very hard today for showing us a complete set of analysis, a demo speech and evaluation and also some of the tips and advice that can help members in that. Although this session are short, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, but we went way over time. Next time we actually have to think about longer time next time. But really thank you, Jim, for coming by as well. Now, uh, before we go, Sandy, do we have some prizes for some, some people who have worked so hard today? Yes, of course. I was waiting for perfect time. I was waiting for a perfect time to do this. Okay, uh, for the host, I would like to say uh, Q&A mm -hmm. section will be uh, closed for a while. So everyone could also help me. Uh, uh, today, demo speaker, we would like to thank you very much, Ivan, for giving us a very wonderful speech about knowing your communication style. Thank you very much. And Chong have a H. C-H. Oh, sorry. H O N G. Oh, sorry. Well, I will modify it. Sorry about that. I will modify okay. it. Thank. Uh, sorry about this. And and also our today thing the heavy weighted uh workshop trial uh project analyst. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron Leon, for this. Also the project founder of this. Thank you very much, Aaron, our workshop trainer. And also I would like to we would like to say uh our evaluator Julie. And Julie, thank you very much for helping us to be a better evaluator. And also, we also would like to say acknowledge Julie uh, to help us to be become a better evaluator. Thank you, you two, to serve as to today's evaluator. And also for me, I would like to I'm today's host and facilitator. And thank you for spending time with me and make sure today's uh, training goes smoothly. And we will also like to say today's training is the most almost like uh, almost like reaching the end uh the almost reaching the end but before that we would still like to uh 
uh, encourage you to switch on your video or audio. At least we take a good photo and then we move on to a really free chat mode or something. But now I would like to uh, have a snap uh, screenshot of today's training. So please, if you're okay, switch on your video and then put some mega or some doll or something that make today's training memorable for both of your life and my life. And thank all the people who have, who have stayed with us for so long and answer all the questions about, wow, leaderships and communicators. So, okay, so I give three seconds. So if you are fine, I'm going to take the screenshot. Are we, Ella, or release? Or everybody just smile or something. Okay, okay so uh, please look at your camera. I'm going to do the screenshot. Okay, so three, two, one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm done with the screenshot. And for the host, I would like to say something. Uh, for today's training, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we try to make the training go smoothly. But the idea, um, the idea is actually from Aaron. Uh, we would like to make uh, the pathway, uh, especially for these two projects, that we wanted to uh, learn from his insight about the analysis, and then we provide with a demo speaker, and then we also provide with a demo evaluator. And at the same time, the panel discussion will be actually in the time for people who have done these two projects and provide more insightful. Because sometimes I, ch uh, I check the information from social media. There are scattered information about how to do this project and how to do this project. It's just scattered. It's actually a good time for this with people who work on this project and then join together to talk about this or in the Q&A section. So the main purpose would be we would like to collect more people who work on the project at the same time and let them to join the training. And we talk it. To, to, to project today. And then next time we will talk to project in the future or in the next Saturday. So uh, to add more something about this project, this is a weekly pathway roundtable discussion on Saturday. So I actually give this a nickname called Pathway 63 Masterclass uh, Saturday online. So you, uh, if you are think this is okay and works for you when you work on this project or in the future, that you actually are welcome to invite more people uh, to join this training. Uh, Pathway 63 of Master Classes a Roundtable Discussion on Saturday. Yay! And also, Aaron just help us to type in the WhatsApp group so we could contact with each other or know more or have help more fellow to semester to know how to work on the project. And next time, to next time we will still host uh, the project will still host the training next Saturday. It's about introduction to mentoring, introduction to mentoring, and also it's still uh, still in the level two. So the next Saturday we we'll be focused still on the level two. So if you still wanted to know more about this, you wanted to more about the insight from the error and analysis or something, or you wanted to discuss more about the challenges or suggestion to work on the the project you're welcome to join the next time next time is still level two it will be two projects introduction to mentoring okay thank you very much so now the meeting it's almost uh, adjourned so i